الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم said the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said ما من عبد يذنب ذنبا فيحسن الطهورة ثم يقوم فيصلي ركعتين ثم يستغفر الله إلا غفر الله له the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he said, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, as collected in Abu Dawood and Tirmidhi, fi Sahih Abi Dawood, he sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, there isn't a servant. that does a sin, that commits a sin and then he makes a perfect wudu, you know, perfect tahara, perfect purification and then he stands to pray two units of prayer, rakatain that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant him forgiveness. Ruahu, Tirmidhi, wa Sunan Abi Dawood. Ayyuhu al-Muhabba, Ayyuhu al-Habba. This hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in fact is in brings immense glad tidings for the believer because you and I both know that you and I are in desperate need of the forgiveness of Allah that we want righteousness and we admire righteousness and we love righteousness we love the people of good but sometimes we find that ourselves we ourselves cannot walk the walk. We find the difficulty of practicing our deen in a manner that pleases Allah And because of that reasoning, or because of this reason, meaning our difficulty in being on istiqamah, being on straightness, and having ikhlas lillah, that we are in need of the glad tidings of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam how to make up for our many shortcomings. And so this hadith is one of those ahadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which shows us how to make up for our sh many shortcomings. And so the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said that there isn't a slave that commits a sin. And, and if we stop there, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasalam said in another hadith, and this is ma'loom, it should be ma'loom and ma'roof in the deen bi durura. However, there are those extreme sects and there are some people who are have deviated and believe that their imams and their sheikhs and their ulama are free from sin and free from mistakes. There are people who believe this. Wallahum sta'an. And, but in the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, Kullu ibn Adam khata wa khayran khata'ina tawabun. All the children 
of Adam commit sins. And the best of those who sin are those who repent. So the Prophet ﷺ let us know that we're all sinners. All of us commit sins. Some of us commit major sins. Some of us commit minor sins. Some of us commit major and minor sins. Some of us are in constant sin. Some of us, min fadli Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from his rahmah, are those people who sin, you know, little. They fall into error, but they don't intentionally do disobedience to Allah. And then there's some of us who intentionally do disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa Allahum musta'an. And so with that being the case, Ahabatullah, with that being the case that we all commit sins and we acknowledge those sins, this hadith that we're talking about gives us a remedy. It gives us a chance to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to redeem ourselves and to redeem our sinful selves. And so that we don't just feel constant sorrow and constant depression due to our sin. Instead, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us various ways to redeem ourselves with Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. That even though you were committing sin last night, and even though this morning you were doing sins, and even though a week ago you were doing sins, you have a chance to redeem yourself. And this hadith specifically is showing us, because the Prophet والسلام, said, there isn't a servant that commits a sin and then he stands for prayer. So here it shows us the fadl, the benefit of prayer, of salat to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to praying to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala alone. And that that prayer is a means for seeking forgiveness, one of the wasail, one of the means and paths that you can gain forgiveness from Allah Azza wa Jal. So, from what we understand from this hadith, is that the one who commits a sin, at that moment, and they get up, and they make an excellent wudu, they purify themselves for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, فَأَسَّنُوا tuhur." This asana tuhur is one in which the servant for whatever kind of tahara they require, this is in reference to tahara Hesia wa tahara ma'nawiya. Tahara hesia refers to the purification of your body. So there's an actual physical purification. The person is purifying themselves. And in fact, there's a, a both types of tahara are involved when we make this tahara. Manawiyah wa hasiya, because you're physically purifying yourself, and at the same time, you are spiritually purifying yourself by making this wudu with the correct intention. Because you're not just washing your limbs, but you're doing it in a manner that pleases Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to prepare yourself for prayer. And this is in accordance your purification and the perfection of that purification goes in accordance with what it is required of you to make prayer meaning that the one for example who has the major hadith has done a major uh you know either through sexual relations akramakum allah or uh, masturbation, akramakum Allah, or whatever that has caused them to ejaculate, then this requires, uh, this is hadith al-akbar. This is the major, pure, uh, major uh, impurity. So one needs to purify themselves by ghusl, by making a shower, the Islamic uh, ghusl. And 
So the one who has done, for example, Wallahu Musta'an, there are those who commit the sin, for example, of adultery uh, or, or fornication or masturbation, which is very common, Wallahu Musta'an. And from this, it requires, if they have ejaculated from the masturbation, if they've had any sexual intercourse, even if they didn't ejaculate, it is required of them to make ghusl. So, for example, and not for the example of being graphic, but just for those who may not know and understand some of these issues of tahara, especially new Muslims, that if, for example, you have Allah, you're a man and you have relations with a woman. Not relations meaning that you kiss or the other, uh, you know, physical touching and things like this, but meaning that you have actually entered her, akramakum Allah. Then, with this, it requires from you to make ghusl, you and her must make ghusl if she, of course, she's, she's a Muslim and, you know, before you can pray. So in, a, in the context of this hadith, meaning if someone does this, they commit, for example, zina, which is a sin, and they feel sorrow and they want to, and shame, and they want to remove, you know, take a step in removing that sin. Of course, it's a major sin, so it requires toba, but it, also the minor aspects of that sin will be, bi idnillah ta'ala, forgiven. And that from this individual, it's required before they can pray. And just for the sake of Allah, of removing the sin of what they did, it requires that they make ghusl and then they pray. Rakatain, two units of prayer. And for the one, as we gave the other example of masturbation, akramakum Allah, that if this individual Uh, a, a person who masturbates and they ejaculate then this person also is required to make ghusl they're also required to uh, make the ceremonial bath or shower before they can pray so that means the one who has fallen into such a sin like this then it requires that they make ghusl, the ceremonial uh, bath, and then from there they they pray rakatain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeking his forgiveness. Perfecting their prayer and perfecting their ghusl, their washing. And another, a third example to make this wad, make this clear, is if one, for example, they were li they lied, okay, a totally different sin. They uh, were lying about some issue that was clear, and they feel sorrow, and they're seeking forgiveness from Allah Azza wa Jal. Right after they lie, and so then they go and they make wudu. In this situation, it would only require for them to wash themselves the regular purification wouldn't require from them to make ghusl. So they make wudu, they purify themselves, and then they pray the rakatain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking his forgiveness, seeking his mercy, seeking his favor, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and help us all to remove the sins that we have, that we do, and that we, what we will do, and what we have done. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ilm al-nafiyah wa rizqan tayyibah wa amal al and rectify our conditions and our affairs. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi وسلم <تصفيق>